welcome to Sideshow Live. We have an incredible show for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about the Grace Premium Format figure. It's almost shipping with designer JP Mavinga and project manager Mike Tolentino. Uh, the fine Mr. Chris Spearman is going to look at 3A's Bumblebee and Blitzwing DLX scale die cast figures. Uh, we're going to do a review of the X23 premium format figure with Robin. That's my imaginary clause coming out there. Uh, but first, let's look at our featured collector for the week. That's Richard Lavelle. Thank you, Richard, for being a collector. You've got, wow, an amazing collection. I got see some, Thanos. oh, a Thanos on throne there in the corner. I see some, Joker, uh, all about that. Love that Joker. Love that Joker. Love, that Joker. Love those tails. I got a, Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like the Batgirl. She's she's a badass. Can I say badass? She's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a B-A-T. Ah, uh, a bat <laughs> ass. There you go. And with that terrible pun, I'm gonna send you off to a video break. So stay tuned. We've got a lot of great content lined up for you today. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sideshow Live. Uh, today we're gonna be looking at the six scale Hot Toys John Wick figure, specifically from John Wick 2, with the newly developed battle damaged head sculpt with authentic and detailed likeliness of Keanu Reeves as John Wick in John Wick 2. Um, so not only are we gonna talk about the amazing uh, detail on this, but also all the things that you can expect when he does ship. So first and foremost, um, he's got a very movie accurate facial expression with detailed hair, beard, and skin texture. He stands at approximately with over 30 points of articulation on the body. He's got 10 pieces of interchangeable hands, including two pairs of gun holding hands, one pair of knife holding hands, one pair of relaxed hands, one right fist, one gestured left hand, and each piece of head sculpt is specifically hand painted. Now as far as the costume goes, you get his uh, amazing, amazing suit, which includes the, uh, the navy blue collared dress shirt, the black colored vest, as well as the intricately designed black colored suit jacket. And you're also getting the, uh, the necktie, the pair of black colored pants, the belt, the black socks, and a pair of the black colored shoes as well. And now most importantly, of course, is all of the weapons that he does come with. So first is gonna be the two pistols with removable magazines one pistol with removable magazine as well, and it can be placed in a pistol case, one pistol and silencer with removable magazine, two shotguns, one rifle with detachable strips, one knife, and some of the other accessories that he will be coming with is two blood oath markers, one regular and one with blood fingerprints on it, three stacks of gold coins, five pieces of gold coins, one pistol case, and then the most important item that he co does come with is that infamous pencil. Um, everything is specific, uh, and then the base is specially, des uh, specially designed oath marker themed hexagonal figure stand with character nameplate and backdrop. And so that was our segment on the six scale Hot Toys John Wick 2 figure. He is available for pre-order now, so go get yours as soon as you can. He is, again, absolutely beautiful. And again, you're watching Sideshow Live, and we'll be right back.
What's up, guys? Welcome back to Sideshow Live. I am your host for this segment, Chris, and we are here to talk about the 3A collectibles. Um, these are the Bumblebee and Blitzwing uh, figures from 3A Toys. Uh, these figures are pretty stunning, and uh, just I, I will say this, that um, if you guys have seen the movie uh, Bumblebee, I really recommend it um, because... This guy gets all the screen time and all the love. And then there's this guy who looks pretty cool. If if you're a fan of Starscream, any any of other Decepticons that are similar to the uh, the Jets, I recommend this guy as well. So let's look at this guy first here, Bumblebee, the uh, the man of the hour. So this is the Bumblebee collectible figure from 3A Toys. Uh, he's going for $145. Uh, he has 55 points of articulation. He's approximately eight inches tall, and he has LED illuminated eyes. He has an interchangeable battle mask and standard head, an interchangeable right arm with stinger blaster and standard right arm, an interchangeable folded and open back wings, and he has three pairs of interchangeable hands, fists, relaxed, and action. He even has one action stand with base. And again, he is uh, shipping uh, now, so make sure you uh, get this figure for your Transformers collection. All right, now to uh, move over to Blitzwing here. Uh, I really do love the aesthetic feature with his pointed and jagged look. That's one thing I always liked about the Decepticons. Um, so let's see here, Blitzwing. Uh, he is currently on pre-order right now. Uh, he's going for $199. He has 51 points of articulation, die-cast metal parts, LED illuminated eyes. He has an interchangeable right arm with null ray blaster and standard right arm. Interchangeable left hand with electron spike blade. Three pairs of interchangeable hands, fists, and relaxed and action hands. Uh, one action stand with base as well. So again, these figures go really well together as seen in the movie, so if you guys want, you can put them on the action stands and have them doing cool battle poses. Um, again, Blitzwing, he is uh, currently on pre-order and we have the uh, Bumblebee figure as well. Again, these are the uh, 3A collectibles, uh, Bumblebee and Blitzwing from the Bumblebee movie. Uh, my name is Chris and thanks for watching Sideshow Live and we'll be right back. The only thing that stayed consistent in my life was change. When somebody comes up to me and asks me where I'm from, I dread that question or that conversation. They have an assumption of like, okay, you were born in this town, you grew up and went to school and your parents live there and all your friends are there. Well. For me, that spread out over many thousands of miles. Gunned down in a weekend of violence. Eight of them killed. Chaos. The city seems all but numb to an epidemic of violence. As a result of the political situation in the Congo, we were always moving. There are certain airports I remember distinctly better than certain homes we lived in. The amount of things that I was exposed to by age 10 for some people, that's more than a lifetime. Coming to the US to an English-speaking culture, that was a shock. Literally, everybody's talking in gibberish. What happened to me is you become more aware of how imperfect and approximate language actually is. A child, before they write, they will draw. It's a language that crosses sort of, if you will, the verbal language barriers. So I think there's something intrinsically human about drawing itself. In that drawing, we inhabit that child's moment because we've all been there. And so there is nothing that child could ever say to take us to that moment. But in following those lines, we enter those moments. If you're going to tell a story, specifically your story, there is no more powerful way to do it than drawing. 
Once I sort of incorporated into my value system, I felt uncomfortable if I didn't draw. With time, I found that what matters is the human connections we make. Reaching people is in many ways why we're here. And if I take that to a professional framework, like what should I be making? I think it's the thing that reaches people's hearts. There's something more profound to be said about this world in my life. And that's why for me, that storytelling path was essential. And to me, there's nothing more important When certain things come together, I think the feeling or the setting or the situation, the circumstances can be called home. It's not geographical. It's one of those things that goes back to language. Something happens in a time and place and that can become home. Where are there people who want to work hard, who want to work for excellence, who want to achieve kind of what I aspire to? It's something that I searched for for a long time. Sideshow opened that door for me. It feels like no other place. One I consider a privilege and an honor to call home. My name is JP Mavinga, and this story is of my journey home. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. I have a very wonderful statue to share with you today. This is the Grace premium format figure. This is the final production sample. So if you order her, this is exactly what you will get at home. And I have two very special guests here with me today to talk about Grace. These gentlemen were seminal in her creation. I've got uh, JP and Mike. Hey guys. Hello. Welcome. Hey. Thanks for joining me nice to talk about Grace Hello. today. Hello. Can we start off with you guys telling me and our audience a little bit about um, what you do at Sideshow and how you contributed to the creation of this amazing collectible? So I'm a senior concept artist and I did the overall design of the piece. Awesome. That's it. Oh yeah. That's it. <laughs> he only did everything. <laughs> Follow that. <laughs> um, well, like to, you know. So my name is Mike Tolentino. I'm a production manager. So basically walk the project through every step of the way from helping with concept and design, uh, following through sculpt, following through mold cast paint, um, and then final production. So working and manufacturing uh, with our partners. It's like the boss. Make it happen. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. making it happen. Can we say overseas? Are we not still? Uh, make, yeah, <laughs> we're the partners overseas. I never know what's, what's no, no, or no. But more importantly, um, for a, a project like this, where we have some interesting suspension gags, we got some big dually bits hanging exactly. up here. Exactly, a lot of dually bits. Lots of uh, engineering challenges yeah. and a lot of physics coming into play here that were probably pretty challenging to produce. Eh? Exactly. So JP yeah. wanted yeah. something that one really um, focused on the, focused on the wings movement. and got yeah a lot of movement on it. Um, we had a couple of selections with her wings kind of folded back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we explored a little yeah. bit. But we decided if we're going to make a gray statue, go for broke and make it with the wings fully uh, fully out there. Hopefully not go for, for broke, but, you know, really. No yes. holds bars. No right? holds bars. <laughs> go for no holds bars. <laughs> we're not going for broke. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit about the design. Uh, yeah. JP, so you, you came up with the composition and the pose for this character. In reaching those conclusions, what were some of the things that you kept in mind talking about the character and kind of who she is and what she does? What, what led you to this beautiful composition? We went through a, a bunch of ideas, but the one thing I kept in mind was that she is a dragonfly inspired, mm -hmm. right? So you, you have to have the wings out. We oh, explored yeah. it, like you said, with the wings down in different places. But, you know, if you had the wings totally out, it'd be really wide. Um, but she's always sort of a, a majestic character, right? Real mm -hmm. regal. So she's a warrior. Yes, right? absolutely, yeah. and that's you know reflected in the armor. But we knew the wings. That that was the main challenge. Like they had to go somewhere, right? If they went down, they're gone, basically from the composition. If they're out, she becomes really wide. So up was kind of the. Yeah, the almost best doubles solution. her in height, really. Yeah. right. And it yeah. was a big topic of debate: is do we want something 
that tall because that's gonna that's a statement piece in your collection and it's not gonna fit on your like your average shelf. Mm. So we consciously made the choice that we did want this piece to be nice and tall and a, a presence. I want to come back to the wings, but that brings up a good point. This is the second figure we've done in the series with Aspen Comics, right? So we also did a, a Fathom figure, did we not? We oh, did. Yeah, okay, there's Fathom right there. Oh. Yeah, awesome. Now, did you think of that composition in mind when you were designing this figure? Because she seems kind of, she's got more going on at the bottom and Grace is more top, so they would display really well together. Is that something that you had considered? Definitely. We thought about, um, and actually the height difference is not that great. So hmm. uh, the heads are, are not that far. So it's almost like a, maybe another third to it. But um, I thought a lot about color. So that one's got a lot of blues. This one's got a lot of warm colors. Mm -hmm. um, the other a lot of thing cools is and a lot of warm colors, right? Yeah. yeah. The the way that the water moves in a helix. I mean, we got that in the skirt as well. So both pieces have like a, a lot of motion. There's some so, harmony yeah. between the two. Um, and definitely, he had a turn had a distinct style as far as like how the women looked and their hair and stuff. So definitely, yeah. everything, everything especially like the eyebrows and the eyelashes. Yeah, is very specific to his style. Yeah, could we get a close in on her face? Yeah. Michael Turner, so who's the creator of, of both of these characters, had a very, very distinct visual style, like you were saying, and I, as far as I know, hasn't really been adapted into 3D a lot, so um, is that some of the research you did when um, you were looking into design for her? Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with his work, and there, there have been other you know, pieces that have been done. Mm -hmm. um, what we wanted to do was not necessarily take his style literally, because we wanted these pieces to sit alongside any sideshow collectible, mm -hmm. right? So they had to be fairly realistic, but there were signatures to his style that could be brought into it. And again, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, some of the makeup and the treatment. Um, but where we really adapted his style was like in the armors, both for both of the pieces, but especially this one. So he had a great sense of rhythm and repetition with a lot of angles and points and stuff like that. So we wanted to put that in. Um, but Let to me, me turn around, you can get the, the uh, back piece. His style was not just the way like he drew features, but actually his design, like his sense of, of um, design with like armors and clothing and fabric and costumes. So that's really the element of his style that is that we pull from basically all the different armors to try to get this one. And even yeah. just going back to the movement, but like his panels on his comics have a lot of motion in them as well. Yeah. And we had to capture that with both these pieces. Yeah, just beautiful gestures. Um, so you'd mentioned she's a dragonfly warrior, and you've probably seen as we've been panning the piece, she has this really cool dragonfly tattoo mm -hmm. on her lower back, and then I'll, I'll turn it around, you can see she's got some wings kind of coming off her cheeks as well. Um, I know decals can be very tricky things to do well. Mike, can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges of working with decals and design and production? We've, um, actually the decals go from not only just the uh, the, the tattoo on the back, and the, but her actual eye, Eyeballs. We've been doing that for... Oh, the actual surface of her eye is also Yeah, decal. we've been doing that for a few years now. Mm -hmm. And we've moved away from hand-painted, especially these smaller things. If you're going to hand-paint them, it's just going to take... There's too much room for error. So a nice water slide decal. So you can get a higher quality... Higher quality and consistency, mm -hmm. which is what we're looking for when mm -hmm. we're manufacturing something, is we're trying to get every piece to look like that, and decals help that a lot. But, yeah, in manufacturing, just getting the colors right or was was hard because the colors were so important for the uh, the prototype that we did and she's a rainbow too i mean there's a lot going yeah, on with soft even... gradients as well this dragon uh fly tattoo yeah. is actually a michael turner sketch oh really yeah that's took it awesome. and um basically did a couple things to it to make it uh, easier to print but yeah that's his art on the back of that that is so cool here i'll turn around so you can take a look at that again um before I segue to the little, <laughs> you're gonna be there. I do want to talk about these wings because they're incredible. And I'm not sure if the cameras are picking it up, but they're almost a, they're a semi-transparent material. Like you can see, it, and there's a little bit of glitter in there. As yeah, well. I so thought it's got... there was some, like little like glittering <laughs> bits there in the yellow. I don't yeah, know if we can get a close up of it. It's really, really, really just striking. I don't know if you can see it. It's you can so definitely see that kind of like, like shimmer of like the insect wings. Um, but JP's initial design, the colors just popped, and there was so much different um, surfaces on there so like if you look at the wings if you even look at her hair the transition between like the dark blues into those lighter yellows and it's got all little sparkles that he added on there that we were able to manipulate in manufacturing yeah as a hairdresser you've truly achieved what any <laughs> fangirl wants yeah. with that like rainbow that, that ultimate uh, fashion 
And as we were talking about it earlier, and I'm not going to break this in front of you now Maybe. to switch out for the exclusive, which is magnetic and lovely. The magnet super straps. We have this super awesome, she's a magical creature, Grace is. She's, I forget, nope, I've done it the wrong way. Yeah. It's okay, I'm going to keep that talking. Right there. There we go. So this Make is her casting some noise. of her magic. Yeah. <laughs> magic missile. There. Magic missile. She's throwing magic hand. missile right now. A rainbow magic missile, which is also in the super cool clear and also with a gradient, which is yeah. amazing. No, it's cool. You can see the like her hand underneath all the magic. Like you can see her thumb sticking out right now. It's super hot and you can actually see it underneath all the little So what gesture lines. is her hand making inside of there? Like, like that. <laughs> that evil mm -hmm. finger twinkle. She's showing her double jointedness. There, there you go. I love the expression with this hand too. She's kind of doing that slight clutch of rage. Yeah, so this was sculpted by Mark Newman, who's done mm. a ton of a incredible lot. pieces. So, a lot of Court of the Dead um, pieces. Absolutely. So working with Mark is great because you don't have to really, like I just gave him the sketch and I knew he was going to nail the gesture and he did. Yeah. Know, he blew me away. But a lot of those small subtle things like the hand, um, the twist of the torso, that's that's just Mark being excellent, you know. Yeah. Um, this is one of those pieces where he gave him the design, and I just focused on on armor and details and notes. But the figure, like there was really nothing to, you know, he just kind of nailed it. Yeah. And, uh, Let's talk a little yeah. bit more about the figure, because I think with a piece like this, Michael Turner's art being really stylized, but there is definitely a balance. I think when you bring something into 3D, where you want to make something seem somewhat realistic or believable, like how do you walk that line as a designer between um, having something that's stylized, but also when you're bringing in real anatomy in 3D, you have to bring in muscles, but you've got wings, which clearly people don't have. Like, how do you, how do you balance that? How do you make those decisions? <clears throat> For me, like, uh, you know, I talked to Mike, first of all, like, what's possible in production, just so I have a sense of it. I tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go home and, you know, sad, but um, here's the thing, like, it's a comic book. Right, so you're working quickly. Mm -hmm. And so what I found is when I study the work, you can see like a range of choices that the artist made per panel. And you get a sense of what the intention is, right? Because no comic book artist is perfectly consistent. Yeah. Like you're working at a certain speed. And they cheat. They, there's a lot of cheats. Yeah, so my thing was aim for the intention, right? Like what's he trying to do? What's the story he's trying to tell? Um, all his figures are absolutely beautiful. Um, he always drew like these elegant, kind of long, you know, female figures. Mm -hmm. But basically, I left that to Mark. Mm. He's absolutely excellent. I knew he would nail it. Um, we knew that the pieces had to kind of be able to be next to each other and work. Mm -hmm. And then that's pretty much it. After that, it was, you know, more gesture, composition, and then taking from all the work that Turner had done, like what, what elements of armors are always there or, or, you know, motifs and things like that. When it came to the wings, um, that was probably the, the challenge of the most thought because hmm. there was the dragonfly. I mean, it had to be like that. So you had to have like the, the translucence, you had to have the color. Um, we really wanted almost an iridescent kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. So you look at bug wings, kind of like that. But then, you know, humans are mammals, right? So what's the mammal that flies? A bat. So essentially, I did a study of both and, you know, gave Mark some kind of made up anatomical sketches of, of what it would look like, but I looked at Turner's work where he had different layers of muscles on top of each other on the wings. Mm -hmm. And so you could really get a sense of what he meant to do. And you know, even like this end is more rounded and this end has a more of a point, mm -hmm. is definitely um, in his art. Um, but actually the bone structure of these two comes from his art. And all I did was look at it and try to make kind of the bustle tissue work in there and, and you know, so it looks like it's alive, like it's plausible. And we added like the haze around the wings because we did want to add at one point, adding weird muscles on her back, like to make the, the yeah, wings work, yeah. which we, we opted not to do, but some of the things that we did opt, like the, the haze around the wings where they plug in. Yeah, I was to gonna say, there's, like, a, there's a possibility of going a little gross here when exactly, you're talking yeah, about, yeah. you know, anatomically realistic yeah. and good. Well, we just, we we're gonna add like a little bit, but you know, in just basically to make the transition better. Mm -hmm. But when you really look, there, there wasn't too many angles of her back. Um, and, but there was another character who's like her, and his wings came out of this back. And it's magical. So in a way, this is probably the best solution because it, it preserves the, the clean form. And then it lets the wings be pure magic. 
um, which despite what you know we considered and went through, I actually find that this might have been the best solution. I think it's very successful. It's so compelling. Um, and what I find really unusual about this piece in particular, I mean, a lot of times we'll design with one kind of like angle that's the best angle for the figure, but this one, I keep turning it, and I'm like, I'm not sure what's her best <laughs> yeah, angle. They're all good so names. good. Yeah. Like, do you have a favorite way of looking at her? Or that was, I mean, you really achieved something here that has sort of a 360 appeal to it. Um, do you have a favorite? I, I'm happy with all of them. <laughs> I'm going to turn around while you're talking. Yeah, about I mean, this. I... I like all the angles. I think um, having this knee knee pad like face forward is probably one of my pointing towards favorites. her. Yeah. Um, Are you the Rihanna victim? Is that right sort of the there. intention <laughs> that, of the piece? Good, like yeah. she's coming at you and yeah. you're the bad guy. One of the things we did have a lot of back and forth one was your facial expression because mm -hmm. you want you didn't want her just to be kind of bland face. You didn't want her to be too fierce and too aggressive. Um, I remember going back and forth with Mark about that. Yeah is just getting that like fierce, determined, not bored, not too glammed up. Um, or just sort of at peace though. Exactly. Like a very confident warrior, certainly not in stress. Like whoever she's facing off in, right? She's kind of like, you're, you're toast. Yeah. This is not, not going to be, <laughs> yeah. not going to be a challenge. Um, let's talk about some of the metallics in this piece because you've got golds and silvers going on here. Uh, what what made you uh, you know pick up the silver and the base and is that kind of based on the concept art? Um, wow, there are so many amazing um, versions of Grace. Mm. Um, Michael Turner, I think, was a brilliant designer. Just just in terms of a character designer, right? So we could have taken any one of his covers and done that and done a great piece. But what we want to do was a, a composite, mm. right? So. Um, so you picked kind of some of your favorite elements from different designs that he'd done? Yeah, th there was one where in the first, so he was actually working on, so the book is called Soul Fire that, that Grace appears in, and he was working on that when um, he passed away. So I basically looked at, you know, that first appearance of her in terms of her armor and, and stuck mostly to that. So that's where a lot of you know, the purple and silver kind of came from. Well, it's fun as a character who's not as like a tier as Superman. Everyone knows what Superman should look like and everyone knows what Batman should look like. We've, we're able to kind of put a composite together like JP said of something that's kind of all encompassing of what looks best on the statue. We weren't total slaves to the, to the source. Yeah, I mean, we, everything came from somewhere mm -hmm. in there, but yeah, like when it came down to the skirt, it's like, well, what, what color? It yeah. could have been any color. Right, but actually that, that transition echoes the wings a little bit, so that's why we did that. And make, you know, um, when we spoke to um, the guys at Aspen Comics, mm -hmm. one of the things they kept saying is like, the book has really warm colors, right? Like a lot of the Aspen um, from Fathom was underwater. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of cool colors. This one's a lot of warm colors, so we, we went for that with the skirt and everything. So. It's nice though, because even though it is warm colors and it's these very rainbow hues, it still doesn't really take down the ferociousness of the piece at yeah. all. <laughs> Which is weird. With the with the pose and the the expression, um, uh, talking about some of that engineering, and especially since we're talking warm tones, and I'm looking at the skirt here. I mean, she really is just suspended by the kind of the tail of her kind of by the back yeah. skirt there, which is cool, and she's kind of up off the ground which really gives the, the feeling of flying. Was that yeah. a difficult thing to... Um, it, we've been doing this gag for, uh, for a while now, mm -hmm. um, as the designers keep pushing the envelope and trying to find new ways to suspend figures and to mm -hmm. make production's life difficult. We've been able to find <laughs> more and more ways to, to, to support that. So what we've been doing a lot is there's a nice hard rod that's uh, bent throughout the, the dress. It comes through here. So it supports her, and the key just kind of just plugs in the base, which is great. Um, and that, yeah, so we're, we're trying to manufacture more for longevity and we we have that in our, in our minds when we go into a project, how we're going to get to stay over time, how we're going to... No sagging do, wings. No sagging wings, No hopefully, cracking to balance cracking against the weight exactly. of that, yeah. And it's just reiterating with the, with the factories and going over different samples and sh seeing what works and what's worked in the past and what we hopefully will work in the future. And we're always, we're always taking successes and little bits of misses and kind of taking that and building it to the next one. Very cool. And I think it's 
what also impresses me about the engineering of this piece and the design, even though it is really tall, it's actually, it's pretty narrow. Like the footprint is pretty modest yeah, that it's on. Yeah, that was the sacrifice that we did. If we're going to make it stupid tall, make it a little thin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a technical term, stupid tall. It is tall. stupid tall. Right. And yeah, yeah. Really Anything taller than a toddler is yes. stupid tall for a statue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, we knew the wings is, that's the showcase. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Right? And so... The base a is bang in those wings. fairly minimal, but a lot of this detail from the base actually also comes from the book. Huh. So there's a dragon that she fights, so I kind of took some rhythms from like the scales of it and everything. And so it still, you know, serves the book. But yeah, we wanted to have kind of a wine glass look. I think as a fan, it sounds like you were able to pull in a lot of different elements of, of Michael Turner's creation, which is cool. It's very much a less a compilation, more of kind of an homage to his yeah, legacy, yeah, yeah. which lives on in these yeah. characters. That was the beauty of working with JP with both these pieces, that he was so invested into them. He, he, he really knew the source, and he knew what would kind of pay that tribute, like you said. What were some uh -huh. of the very compelling... You talked about his intention. Um, so getting to know Grace and preparing this design, um, what was some of his intention with this strong female character that really stood out to you and kind of kind of drove you throughout the design process? What inspired you about this character? Um, well, he was known for like these strong female characters, right? Um, for me, this one was... Um, you know, a lot of times... You know, we get to the point where people are really kind of cynical and some of these characters are are a little bit uh, jaded or something. You know, like mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, but this one was, she's grand, she basically is immortal and she flies. Like there's no, you know, she's just, you know, kind of this heroic uh, character. So at that point, every design of her is also like a fashion piece, <laughs> you know, like she did these skirts and dresses and all kinds of stuff. And so um, for me, when you look at somebody who's got that that body of work in that range, like you're you're sort of like you're saying, homage, trying to pay tribute, but but trying to to hit the grandeur of it, mm -hmm. right? Um, when you take a comic book, I mean, there's so many panels, there's so many story moments. Like there's one moment where she's on a bike, like a you know motorcycle, and yeah. she's got her wings down, and she, like. Be, you know, okay, we're not going to do that, but like that's a very different moment for that character, you know, right? I think when you There's, said bike, he like physically convulsed, like, oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> don't make and give you a swim. Don't make me like that. You know, it would have been like oh. this long, right? So so that's how you got the wings. You were like motorcycle, yeah. and then they all had a seizure, and you were like, no, no, just yeah. wings. <laughs> mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I mean, like there's, a, there's an original design of her where she had a spear, right? And they, oh, they dropped right. that, but, mm -hmm. you know, we explored that as well. I mean, there's so many things, but... For me, like, as a fan, thinking of other fans, um, if I had to add one piece, what would it be? Like, there's a lot of things you're not going to put on there because if you have this, you don't have that. But think of a, of a fan of the character and then a fan of Michael Turner. If you put the two pieces side by side, right, that to me tells a story of this artist's sort of approach, his growth, you know, mm -hmm. his technique. Um, they're very different color-wise and feature-wise, but there's some things that are there in terms of like the details and the rhythms and the patterns. And that's where it goes to that point of intention. It's like, you know, you study, for me, like I had to study his art mm -hmm. and look at it for a while and trying to find well, what keeps happening, what's, you know. And, and that's no small and, mission, I mean, to look yeah. at someone, a creator who has, you know, passed on and say if I'm gonna make one piece that's the piece those are every every yeah. little decision becomes very very tough yeah I mean you you're, you're guessing but but I I feel that like every so every person that did that would have come up with their own conclusion mm -hmm. right so so it's in a way it's collaborative but to me there is a, you can tell when somebody really cares you can tell when somebody is is romantic in their vision of how they draw and how they express a character and and for me, you felt that in this character, there was everything about her was grand, right? So I'm like, if we, if we can get that and give that to the fans, like mm -hmm. that's, that's the essence of it, right? The rest is in the books. Yeah, I think the word grand really captures it. I mean, even as you're saying that, and I'm looking at it from behind, the wings almost form like a crown almost coming up. There's definitely like a purity and a majesty to the piece with the sort of the wine glass shape like you described it. I mean, it's definitely, it's there. Uh, let's talk about the paint a little bit because there's a lot of different techniques going on here. A lot there's some of color really, in there. Yeah, a lot of color, some hard edged, some gradients. Can you talk about some of the, the challenges of achieving that? 
I don't know if I there's can. A lot of, there's a lot of, that was a long well, there's time a lot of like, detail work here, <laughs> like in the, um, in the top, and then we've got some soft gradients here, and incorporating both those things, some alongside each other. Yeah, in I'm a trying piece to remember. Be I, a bit I, I should have remembered who actually painted, but I remember. Okay. Yeah. Did you catch the whole thing at the bottom? Mm -hmm. I believe so, yeah. Because you nailed it. We, oh, we're done. No. You know, well, we... <laughs> That's your secret. You're so, like, just catch. The cat. I, I, uh, we've worked with her obviously a while. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I've had a few pieces that work closely with her. And so Kat basically sort of taught me as a designer, like, That's true. this works and this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Do this and don't yeah, do that. Yeah, can right? do. So what paints to put on top of others and stuff like and that. And also like when you're sculpting then, too, so like what to recess and what should be yeah. um, brought in so it helps you can just throw a wash in some of the detail as opposed to having to paint all that little filigree by hand. So um, when you say recess, you mean like actually going into some of the sculpted out details of the piece as opposed to something that goes across the surface that'll just pull up exactly. texture? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So we, we try to, especially some of the smaller, finer details um, we decide what's going to be easier because we can do we can do we can prototype once really really well. You know that's we, that's that's a walk in the park for us. But to be able to have a manufacturing team be able to do hundreds if not thousands of these pieces, it's is there's a lot more difficulty to that. This is a good point to bring up again. This is a production sample. Yes, yeah, so this, this is not is, a prototype. Since we, you know, you can do anything by hand, but again, yeah. like you said, something that's reproducible. It's, this is it's quite a feat, and so to be able to find something that still get. showcases the abilities, but is going to be achievable at the end, at the end of things, is always a, a fine line to walk. And when you're working with the design team directly and with the um, like the painters and the sculptors, it's really good because we can we have that forethought to say. All right. Well, if we're gonna have all this like gold work on the bikini, is it gonna be something? Is it better to sink it in or pull it out? What's gonna be easier for her to paint, and then I get to chime in. What's easier for our teams to paint? And so it, it, it's a lot of back and forth, and it's a it's a huge collaborative uh, effort. Yeah. And she has actual stones set into the figure too. It looks like there's a little glass. Yeah, there's some in clear the, elements. In the necklace here, the and necklace, then necklace, and I think in the um, crown. In the crown, and it looks like even here in the center of the top. Yeah. She's got like little blue. It mm -hmm. really picks up the light, the, the light nicely. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is it crown those, metal? And the crown, the crown, we did not go for metal, but you can give it a little dingling. It's it's nice and malleable, so it's not going to break. Give, give it a dingling. I'm going to give a little dingling. There right. you go. See? Whoa. Yeah, it's okay. nice and flexible, so that yeah. way, um, again, forethought of when it finally gets into customer hands, we don't want a fantastic piece like this and then have it that little horn on the crown to be broken and have to go through all that. So we try to think of that before we even get it to the customer's hands. Awesome. Yeah, so one of the cool things is I work with my cool production, right, mm -hmm. at the very end of it, but I worked with him from the beginning. So, you know, looking at the art and like how can we achieve this sense in production, we're talking about that, and then we're talking to all the other steps in between. Yeah. So the features are not just like, you know, I drew something random and somebody else has to figure it out. It was actually designed to, to be like that. Like, how can we evoke Michael Turner's art in a yeah. final production piece? Exactly. Right. So I'm learning from Mike. He's telling me, okay, this is what's possible. And essentially, he's giving me the tools. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm bringing him, okay, here's my question. Here's my, you know, with the wings, we, we talked about, you know, different ways of doing it clear and different things. Can we, can we cast things in it or whatever? Yeah. And he would, you know, kind of give me the feedback and teach me, like, how what we can and can't do, how thick they can be, and then I'm gonna work with a sculptor and a painter. And that's that's how we we got to where everything there's like feasible in mm -hmm. production, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So with your collaborative team ups you can take on more ambitious designs. Yes. Especially if the design intent is made to know new known early on, yeah. you can come up with really interesting ways to achieve that that JP might not even have known of. Exactly. And it's and the teams are working more hand in hand like that for not just these projects, but almost all the projects that we're doing now, a lot of the times the, the manufacturing project manager will be brought in early just to say, hey, this is, this is our intent. We want her to fly by her dress. Is that cool? And we'll say no, but then JP break, breaks us down and we make it <laughs> What's right. your secret? It's crying, isn't it? Secret crying. Is you can't crying. say no to the crying <laughs> eyes. I mean, you know, ask a few times. I, you know, the thing about it is, Sometimes the answer is no because we've never done it before. Mm -hmm. And then it's not just that the answer is no. It's like, well, if you're going to do it, this is what it takes. That That's the answer that I look for. So we need more mass somewhere, right? So take the skirt. Like yeah. there, there's a certain 
volume there. It doesn't look yeah, like we it ended because up having of having to fatten up yeah. a lot of the bottom of the yeah. back. But because of the folds and the undulations, you don't realize how thick that actually is that you can. So that's the solution. Yeah, and the way you know? it's yeah turned over. I mean, it really f it looks light, but you put your hand around it, and it's you know it's a hamburger bun. Yeah. There's yeah. Some, that's a weird unit of measure. Girth to it. Well, that's like four like, hamburger guns. You know. <laughs> hamburger guns thick. Oh. Yeah, so to me, like that's that's the thing. It's like you know, learning like how do yeah. we do what we want. It's not like, um, I mean, th there's some no's. That's there, a, I get it. But I'm saying usually it's more like we don't have a solution. Yeah. That's the few no. I don't knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What. Uh, so let's thank, thank you both for joining us. This was amazing to get insight on this beautiful piece. This is a Grace Premium Format figure from the um, Aspen Comic Series. Um, let's. I'd like to end it with just a thought from each of you. And what's your favorite part about this piece? Like when you when you walk away from it at the end of the day. There's so many different. We have decal, paint, glitter. Um, you know, semi-transparent. Obviously, it's a really really strong character design, um, strong composition. Do you have one, if you had to pick one favorite thing about it, what's what's that Sophie's aspect? Choice. Hmm? Sophie's Choice. Yeah, exactly. The Sophie's Choice. Never Great mind. Grace's never Choice. Mind, never mind the reference. <laughs> just, just answer her question. Then. You took it to a very dark place. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, for me, this is, it's not on the piece. It was working with Mark Newman. Oh. Um, it's so. Mark is fantastic. It's, it, it's everywhere on the piece. It's hard to say one element, but it's working with somebody who, um, he's just an extraordinary artist, right? And um, Mark is super talented, yeah. and he works traditional too. Well, this is, that's is was one cool. of the fun things with this one is this is one of his, his earlier digital, digital pieces. Oh, first digital. Was awesome! It first, was his first full, I think his first full digital. Yeah, yeah super for, cool. If not one of, and for him to be able to learn that the ZBrush program was really cool because he knew how he would do things practically mm -hmm. really easily, but to see him challenge himself and doing some of that filigree. And like well, the, the true sign of a master to go digital and do something that's yeah. so um, ambitious with engineering and exactly, suspension yeah. gags. Yeah. That's Mark. good, and it's yeah. and it's also awesome. like he has a huge support team back here in the office with our in-house sculptors that are able to help him and um, show him a lot of different techniques and a lot of different engineering tricks. So that was definitely one of the, the highlights of working on the project. Yeah, he did a great job. So your favorite part of Grace is Mark Newman. <laughs> Mike, what's yours? <laughs> Mine is JP. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> this is good. This is a very feel-good team yeah, effort here. Yeah, it ended a good note. We took it dark, and there Friendly. we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to say she's my favorite girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I couldn't You took it to another dark place. <laughs> I, just, I had to get it out. No, I, I really love the, <laughs> the decals, I think, are phenomenal on her. The level of detail there is super cool, and those wings are phenomenal. So... Yeah, even the uh, filigree on the back of her calf is supposed to evoke a dragonfly. Oh, yeah. See, I'm still traumatized from Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, Gang of Thrones. Um, <laughs> so it kind of looks like the, um, the octopus Greyjoy. house. Thank you, Greyjoy house. Oh. Um, so it's a... I see. My Rorschach. Can you do it in the voice you did before? <laughs> <laughs> we have a ghost, a helper trivia ghost in the back there. Yeah. Now this piece has a, has a lot to look at. I mean, one of my goals as a designer is for somebody to own the piece, have it, and maybe a year later look at it and discover something, mm -hmm. and and hopefully have you know a bunch of those moments. So hopefully. Like the glitter in your it. hair. Yeah. There's a lot. The more you look at this piece, <laughs> the more you see going on. It's incredible. I mean, really, it's a testament to the conversation around teamwork that we've, we've had, you know, talking about the making of this amazing piece. Mike, yeah. JP, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. This was an incredible conversation. Once again, this is the Grace Premium Format figure uh, going up for pre-order soon. We've been looking here at the production sample. Thank you for joining it's us. It's on pre-order already. Oh, it's on pre-order already. Sorry, it's Shipping already, soon. already on pre-order. Shipping soon. Thank you. Dish. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, welcome back to this segment. My name is Robin and we got an exciting item for you. We've been working with our production manager, Joe Blauser, to get an exciting production look at X23. Woohoo! Woo How awesome is this, right? Nice, nice. So X23 has an interesting bio interesting history and i'm sure the super fans are well aware but if we have some surfacey nerds that are joining us today i'm going to give you a 30 second rundown of our lady x23 she was a character that was created by craig kyle and this was in 2003 for an animated series that was called x-men evolution and about a year later x23 character showed up in the comics now, since then, she's been in comics, she's been in video games, she's been in uh, animation and feature film. X-23 is also known as Laura Kinney. She technically is a genetic clone of Wolverine. So what happened is the um, evil group wanted to recreate Weapon X and they wanted to actually get a hold of a clone of Wolverine. So they hired a whole bunch of geneticists to try and make this happen because they had some stolen DNA that they took off of Wolverine unbeknownst to him. Now they hired a Dr. Kinney, Dr. Sarah Kinney, and they had her working these experiments and up until experiment 22 was a complete failure. And she went to her boss and said, hey, I can't make a male version of Wolverine, but I think I can pull off a female version of Wolverine. Can we do it? And they said, no, we don't want you to do that. So much like every evil super scientist across pop culture, they don't read their evil, you know, employee hand guide. They don't follow lab safety rules. So <laughs> Dr. Kinney actually went ahead and did it. And she made a female clone of Wolverine called X-23 because it was the 23rd experiment. It was the only experiment up to that point that actually succeeded. So she became a, a pretty much kick-ass assassin and caused chaos throughout the comic universe. <laughs> So she does have various storylines, however, but eventually she joins the good guys and is adopted by Wolverine. And uh, he sends her to the super duper mutant boarding school where all the kids, mutant kids are going. And that starts off another storyline for her. So again, you can see her in movies and comics and in various, um, various plot lines, but that's the general uh, bio for X-23. Now in two, uh, 2015, you actually see her show up in the all new Wolverine and she takes on her father's moniker of Wolverine. So she's actually fighting and, and um, existing under his title. But by 2018, we see her return to the X-23 snappy stabby uh, name, which I think suits her much better. And you know, she's got time invested in that. So Sideshow statue that we have here, costs $590, is approximately 25 inches tall, 13 inches wide, and 10 inches deep. Now, for anybody who has this on, on order with us, I would suggest please, please, please hold off if you're getting a custom display uh, for it. Because you really wanna have the statue in hand. Sometimes people get display cases and they're a little tight and it interferes with the dynamic movement that we have in the piece. So sometimes people opt to have display boxes that are a little bit uh, larger than the statue itself and not getting so close to dimension. So please hold off. If you are doing that, wait till you get the statue. So this particular version is uh, Sideshow's take on the unique style X-Men Wolverine combat outfit. And now that I've explained to the surfacey newbie nerds that have joined us, her connection with Wolverine, it makes sense that we would do a unique take on this particular combat outfit and, and make it kind of meld with that of dad's. Uh, <laughs> Our, we've had two sculptors work on this particular uh, figure and they did a phenomenal job, phenomenal job. We had Daniel Ulrich, who did the the figure in here and we also had marco ploof who worked on the sentinel mechanical base let's get you a little spin here they have just did a wonderful job 
with the textures, with the metal. If we spin it around here, you'll see that they actually designed the metal and peeled it away. So it, it looks like something not only ripped into it, but held on and, and bent the metal back. Some really beautiful uh, deep detailing in here. And also, uh, Daniel did a wonderful job with, oh, I'm gonna spin her back here, sorry. <laughs> I'm spinning too fast. Uh, he did a wonderful job with the outfit to the point where when I initially saw this, I was like, oh gosh, they, they decided not to do an all sculpt figure, but they decided to go cloth and cut and sew. And I actually, you know, was reaching out and, and touching the sculpture. And I'm sorry, Joe, I, I touched it and I got other people to touch it because we didn't believe that it was all sculpture because the, the detailing and the texture just looks so spot on. And between the lighting and the texture and the paint, it, you really, it, from a foot away, you think that it's actually leather. I'm gonna scoot her around right there. And with the belt and the detail on the belt, and then also where the cloth changes texture and transition in the coloring, it just looks like cloth. It's they did an amazing job. Also, our one of our master painters, Kat Sapien, was instrumental in doing the paint design on this. And I think that you really need both. You need you need a, a, a good solid sculpture to enhance the paint and you also need the paint techniques to enhance and bring out the details of the sculpture. And if you have one is weak in that combination, it does, it just doesn't hit, hit it out of the park. It doesn't check all the boxes I think that the collectors are looking for. But I think with this combination with this group, they really, really did a wonderful job. Now Kat, we, uh, she, you can see her artist bio online. Uh, we did uh, a wonderful video on her background. She actually has, <laughs> she's a mathematician <laughs> by, uh, you know, by trade early on, earlier on in her career. And it's kind of funny when you see her workstation, everything is lined up and everything is put out maniacally and it has a pattern and it's, it really is fun. So if you guys get a chance after this video, please take a, li a look at the link below, go over to her bio and, and uh, take a listen to it. It's pretty cool. All right, we're gonna flip her around here so you can see a side shot of the pose. Now you can see that the way that they've designed her, she's leaping over this just crushed up hand and she's in the middle of the battle and she's slashing and she's hacking and it they did really create a nice fluid movement between the extension of the leg all the way up through her body and then wrapping around to the whipping hair. It just, it's a nice action shot that's counterbalanced by the mechanical heavy nature of the hand that's trying to grab onto her. I think it's, it's a really interesting pose and it allows for a, a heavier detailed base but a very light kind of uh, fluid movement in the figure that really denotes and, and helps carry off the, the, the battle pose that she's in. Now she also has a clever pinpoint here on the mechanical tentacle. We'll call it tentacle. <laughs> they say it's part of the hand, but it looks like a, a tentacle coming out. So she has a pinpoint here and then there's a a metal rod that goes up through her leg and her thigh, which helps counterbalance the weight. And I think they designed it very cleverly because it's hidden. And when you twist the statue around, the interesting part is that if you twist it in the right way, it looks like she's just slipping through the tentacle. And you can see that her leg isn't caught at all. Let's flip it there. So if you position her that way, but then when you slowly twist it around, it looks like she's almost being caught. So I think that's a, it's an interesting play and it changes up the story uh, of what you're looking at just by twisting the statue a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. This is definitely one of my favorites. Now the collector's edition, which you'll see here, is a 2,500 piece edition and it features the portrait which is a, a fierce fighting portrait. And she's got kind of like a grimace on her face and ready to finish slashing the, the, the crud out of the Sentinel. 
and it also features the the whipping hair which i think just is really cool because it looks like she's just coming down off of a, a big leap we also have an exclusive edition of the statue that features an additional alternative head and that head has the mask her eye decal is different she's got these glowing red eyes and also the mouth is a little bit more open in more of a yelling um, expression and that comes with the exclusive version of the statue and we call that the rage portrait and we'll have the guys throw that picture up online right now yep, awesome right now right now, <laughs> right now. <laughs> and you'll see she also has her bone claws and the foot claws are on full display here there you go one two and if you guys are fans of logan anybody fan of logan oh, absolutely right okay. charles xavier in a scene where he's talking with wolverine um he kind of uh, you know is theorizing why she her her claws are different from wolverine's and he said well you know she's a female and sometimes that will change up the you know how how uh, the claws might be and he actually compared her to a lioness in the wild that the you know the the hand claws are for offense and uh, prominent uh, back claws on the lioness are there for defense so if they're fighting and trying to defend themselves they can rip open whatever predator's belly is is uh, in the mix with them so i thought that was an interesting take that he had on why she's from the same genetic material but still significantly different than wolverine it's pretty, pretty cool. I think I, that movie. She was just amazing. I, they featured in Logan. They featured X twenty three as a, as a young girl. But for what she eight ten, she took out like a whole army full of dudes. So it was pretty wild. They had her jumping and spinning around people's necks. So if you haven't seen Logan, it's definitely a film that you need to binge watch. You know this coming weekend. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna drive you guys crazy, spin this around again, because we haven't really shown the back of her. Awesome. Look at that. Sweet. So we also took the time to ask the collectors online if you had any questions for our PM Joe, uh, who was in charge of this pro project. And we did have quite a few that participated. So thank you if you're one of the one of the collectors that submitted your question for us. We appreciate that. Fortunately, we couldn't ask him all these questions, but we tried to take uh, the ones that were the most popular. So Don Frazier had asked Joe, what other figures can be put together with this one to create a busted up Sentinel? So I don't know, Joe, I don't know, Don, if you were asking Joe, if you can take the Sentinel pieces off the base and assemble them because you can't do that. You can't make your own busted up Sentinel. But we do have uh, two statues that are available or that we had released that feature different parts of the Sentinel. So this is a companion hand to the hand that you will see in the Wolverine premium format uh, statue that he's leaping over. So those are a match. And also with our M Magneto maquette, and you can see he's hovering over a portion of the crushed skull. So when you put them all out, they look really wicked, uh, you know, because it, we call them proximity bases where they're related and it continues to tell the story of what's going on in the scene. So thank you, Don. I hope that answered your question. The, ne the next, these got to have, they have to be screen names, obviously, but it's Cheeseburger David. So Cheeseburger David wanted to know, um, are the claws made of steel, Joe? And Joe says, no, the, the claws are made out of metal, but not necessarily steel. And I'll also tell you, Cheeseburger, that they're not made of adamantium either. So I'm sorry to disappoint you, but they are metal Ooh. and <laughs> they are metal and they're significant. So uh, I'm sure you'll be happy with it. Adam Bunch asked if there are foot claws. And as we, we showed earlier, and I'm twisting it so you can see, there's two prominent bone foot claws that she has that come out of her boots. Just to be specific, Joe says these are not plug-in claws. They're one piece with the boot. So when you display it and you take her out of the, the box initially to display, keep in mind this is all one piece here and one piece here. 
All right, we have Quincy Morris St. Kitts, which is a very long name. Yes. I wanted to know if X-23 uses the same metal rod technique as Harley Quinn and Rogue. And yes, we explained that earlier where she's pinned. It actually extends up a little bit. I did not know that we used it in Harley and Rogue, but Joe says yes. So, yeah. Especially Rogue. Especially Rogue. So yeah. Joe says yes, um, we do use something very similar with all these three statues. Um, Quincy also asked if the all-new Wolverine mask was a part of the concept art process or an option for an exclusive. And Joe said that the all-new Wolverine mask, uh, it was never intended to be that. And they always, from the beginning of the design process, wanted to do their own take on it. So I guess the answer is no, if you want a definitive answer. <laughs> no. So I want to give a big shout out to the artists, to the designers, to the production people that helped to create and bring this to the collectors. And I also want to big, uh, give a big thank you to the collectors who have this on order and are bringing it into their collection. And if you're joining us today and you have an interest in this item, uh, please feel free to go to the link below and check out the gallery, check out the information, and you know, make sure that you put it in your collection if you have an interest. Do it, do it, I know, it's, just do it. I, it's very cool. So we're gonna, Joe is probably in the chat right now going, stop touching the statue. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm gonna get yelled at when I go to the other, other building on that. So again, we have the link below. Sorry, Sam, I'm gonna make you flash it again. If you have an interest in X20, just put it there or here. No, I'm pointing in the right place. Stop giving me a hard time, man. Stop giving me a hard time. <laughs> okay, that wraps it up for this week. But we've seen, oh my goodness, we've seen X-23. We've seen Grace, PF. We've seen Bumblebee. We've seen Blitzwing. We've seen John Wick, Hot Toys John Wick, which Keanu Reeves is my favorite, absolute favorite. Seen it. Yes. I haven't seen the third movie yet. You haven't seen it? No. You, I do. What is wrong? You got to <laughs> stop binge watching Game of Thrones. It's over, people. Get out to watch John Wick. It's amazing. It's like, well, it's a lot of killing, a lot of blood and gore, and it's just, you know, now you go to see how inventive they can be when they take people out, you know? It's kind of cool. But I do recommend John Wick for both of you if you haven't seen it. Um, definitely go out and see it. So again, thank you um, to Anna, to Paul, to Chris, to JP, and to Mike who joined us today and, and, and helped out on, on the live show. We appreciate your, your help. And for anybody that hasn't seen our online contests, I, I had a, a conversation with somebody the other day. They're like, we didn't know you did contests. I'm like, okay, we give away thousands of dollars of products a month. It just between all our social channels and our uh, partner giveaways and our newsletter giveaways. So I would suggest if you're not familiar with that, go to sideshow.com slash contests. Sam, put the link down here and take a look and bookmark it because those, those update daily, weekly, and you don't want to miss anything that we're giving away. We give away everything from uh, t-shirts to $900 items. So please make sure that you check it out and participate. Also, we have a pop culture uh, Alexa skill ad free. So if you are getting ready in the morning, <laughs> how many of you guys got the Alexa skill downloaded? I know every, all the collectors that are here with us have the Alexa skill, but I'm looking at you guys. No, I mean, we, I, I don't even have an Alexa, so <sighs> yeah, I don't allow that. No, Alexa, you know, I, no. That technology is kind of scary. Yeah. I believe that she's talking to me and she's disrespecting me in my own house. But um, that's just me. I have conspiracy theories because Alexa never listens to me. She'll answer. She'll answer my family, and not me. It's it's just insane. It's absolutely insane. But we do have an Alexa skill. So go to Amazon, download that. And we also have a wonderful blog from a lot of different guest writers that contribute. And you can find that at geeksideshow.com. That features a lot of independent writers. So we suggest that you check that out. Thank you so much for joining us and the crew here today. We appreciate it. <laughs> and until next week, don't forget to let your Geek, Geek Side, Side Show. show.